Sandra Volner's The Trouble With Being Born made headlines earlier this year after being pulled from the Melbourne International Film Festival online. The film will instead come to cinema over this December. The story of an android who is caught between the memories installed within it and the memories of the people it interacts with, the film is a striking science fiction allegory that recalls the work of David Lynch and Jonathan Glazer. Sandra Volner, thank you very much for joining us. Independent cinema is increasingly using lo-fi science fiction to explore a variety of stories. Did you and your co-screenwriter always envisage this story to be science fiction or did that come later? You know, I mean, the very first idea was to have this film about this little android looking like a child. So, of course, it was in a way obvious that it's going to be a, a science fiction film and related to all those questions because it's about an AI. Um, but from the very beginning, I was very sure that it's, um, and I had a strong feeling that it has to be in our nowadays world, because I did have the feeling that it's more about topics um, about our nowadays life already, or about uh, things we always uh, maybe have encountered and not just about a futuristic um, idea. So yeah, I think it was clear from from the beginning, but we never talked about it um, as a, let's say, sci-fi film in that sense, because we always had the feeling that, you know, the usual genre narrative would be either the AI wants to conquer the world or the AI wants to become human. And what I was very much interested in was to show the AI more as a mirror, you know, just as, a, as the object that is the vessel that is filled with the weirdest um, dreams or um, abysses uh, humans have. So yeah. yeah, that was the initial idea. So the trouble with being born deals with the idea that you can never really leave your past behind. Uh, is this a larger theme that intrigues you as a storyteller? Yes, for sure. I mean, how could we? It's a, or, or would we even, you know, I mean, aren't the memories and uh, um, whatever we lived through, it's the core of our identity. If we don't have them, wouldn't we lose uh, a narration and also our meanings in a way and we would be in a constant now. Mm -hmm. So I'm very um, intrigued by also the overlapping of, the, of memories and imagination and how they are the core of our narration and how, how much we need this fictionalized narration to actually give our world some meaning um, but also to actually not go crazy, you know? Yeah. I think it's a very, yeah. It's a very interesting uh, theme that I already explored in, in my earlier film. Yeah, it's a, I think it's, it's a fascinating notion because the picture, your film talks about this, this android, or it depicts this android who's got memories that are not its own. And the people that it interacts with, both in the earlier part of the picture and the later part of the picture, are both trying to recreate their own histories with this with this android. So, yeah, um, perhaps talk to us a little more about um, how you came to you came to this idea where you ultimately got two sides of one coin and two people looking at the same thing, but from completely different uh, perspectives. I mean, uh, I was uh, searching for, for a perspective that is non-human um, for quite some time. And then my good friend and co-author, Roderick Warich, he came up with the idea, oh, you could, uh, you know, make a film about this little child, Android, and um, living with this man. And I immediately jumped onto that because I had the feeling, oh, that's the vessel I was searching for. Mm -hmm. And I really had the feeling that I was very much interested in this anti-Pinocchio story, you know, as I said before about this, um, this story of, it's not the piece of wood that wants to become human and that is, has this uh, magnificent soul and uh, wants to be human. It's just the piece of wood, you know, and we want to project things on it. And that was the very, the very first idea of that, to really show it just as this, so to say, piece of wood that does not want anything but uh, what it's programmed to want. And it does not care about what it is programmed to want, you know? And that is something I found quite painful also, like seeing it because it's such a, it's a, it's a dark mirror you have, you know? Yeah. Because how can it not care about that? But um, 
And yeah, I find that that's one of the most interesting things, of course. How, how much does an object or anything else needs to resemble ourselves so that we apply the same moral standards and and what yeah and, and is it even right to do so so yeah i find it interesting yeah and obviously you you turn that up i suppose by having the android be a child which obviously elicits a much more um primal response from the audience as well which obviously would have an impact on how people how people ultimately interact with the picture yeah i mean that was something i found very important from the very beginning you know that it is a childlike uh, robot because also, not so much, of course, it's a provocation, but also I think I was, uh, I wanted to provoke a thought, not just an emotion, you know. And um, what, I, what I found very important about it is that, of course, we anthropomorphize and um, this android much more, if it even looks like a, like a kid and we empathize with it. Mm. And, but if we then have to, um, the experience that it's just an object you know the, we can fall back to that from a higher level you know and i found that um very important to actually play with that to discover that and with the picture uh, the trouble with being born shows another potential side to robotic evolution uh, do you think it's inherent upon our leaders to anticipate and potentially intervene where these advances might turn sinister which is ultimately kind of where we find ourselves in the first half of the movie. Yeah, I mean, that's the question because basically it's the humans who don't have the boundaries, right? So it's not about the evolution of the, of the robots becoming evil. It's about probably the, the humans letting them to become whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So I find it, uh, of course, quite interesting. And I mean, also thinking about it, you know, in my research, um, I've, I stumbled upon these uh, lifelike dolls that look like children and that you can like buy online for actually only one reason, but someone would argue it's just a doll to play. Mm. And I was really shocked by that, even though it is just an object and there I, you know, Actually, it raised the question within myself, what would I want? Um, with, can I um, look at it as just a doll or do I have to apply my own moral standards to it? And I was very divided in that uh, feeling. And this was something I wanted to explore, you know. And I think you explore it very successfully. Um, when you're making a film that deals with these delicate sort of themes, uh, how does that alter the way that you approach the production? You are referring to like okay, we are shooting with a kid. Yeah, I'm shooting with a child, and and when a, a child who may not necessarily be aware of what what's being depicted on screen or how it's going to be cut together in the end. I mean, yeah, how, how do you kind of just create a um, I suppose a, a safe environment for that sort of thing? I mean, you know, honestly, I have to say that I believed for quite some time that I uh, will do this film with an older actress, uh, with Jana McKinnon, because I worked with her before already. And just because I had the feeling, oh, how are we going to shoot this with a kid, you know? Um, but since I carried this question for such a long time in my head and also with my crew and with everyone in the production, I think uh, we were pretty much prepared to to do so, and I realized that I that I'm that I'm lying to myself that I cannot shoot this film with a you know with an adult uh, trying to look like a child, mm -hmm. um, but I have to have the physique of a child and the look of a child, yeah. and so we started to search, and it was really not an easy search because it's not so much about you don't you don't just need a talented child. You need a child that comes from a like a, a good family, from a healthy family that has still a, a way of um, that is mature enough to talk um, with you know about those subjects. And of course, we talked in a child-appropriate way about the subjects um, that are um, coming up in this film, which is not just a dangerous relationship of this man with the android, but also about loss and death and you know. 
And um, so we were really, really lucky to have found Lena Watson, which is obviously a stage name, um, and her family, because, you know, if you're casting kids, um, you need the family as well. You cannot leave them out. And yeah, we were really happy. And she was just such a mature, smart, talented young girl. And we talked the very time, the very first time we saw each other, we talked about what this film is about and um, how and why I think it's important to tell it and how dangerous this relationship is. And yeah, of course, with her parents as well. Um, and she understood and I found that, yeah, yeah, we were very lucky to have found her. For the shooting itself, um, it was not so much of a problem because, you know, every context we created that goes into any um, sexual context or anything that would not be child appropriate, we really created it in the post-production. Yeah. So um, she knew what this film was about. She also knew um, what we're going to do at which um, scenes. But I completely, for example, I completely dubbed her. So I worked with another actress to um, dub her scenes, but also to change complete sentences and um, bring these sexual contexts in there or any other context. So the shooting itself was pretty harmless. Is that the word, you know? And yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's fascinating to think about. Well, look, thank you very much for talking to me today, uh, Sandra. Uh, your film, The Trouble With Being Born, is coming to Cinema Novas this uh, December. So thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today and all the very best for your next project. Well, thank you so much. And I'm really happy that you uh, chose to show the film and I'm really thankful and uh, that you bring it to an Australian audience. So thanks a lot also for the nice talk. Thank you.